have one, and he's right. The officials are Carl Hess, Ryan Kersey, and Jamie Lucky. We're underway, and Carolina has it first. You thought that they were a little passive with Marshall in the game over in Chapel Hill. They wanted to make him turn his back, cut down on his vision. Here's Marshall. Working on Singler. Takes it right down the lane. Short. Got to his left hand, but the bigger cover and Singler made that a tough shot. Duke's first offensive possession. Nolan Smith, he's short. The follow's good. Plumley. Uh, if Duke can neutralize the, the output of North Carolina's front line, it'll go a long way through their uh, win this afternoon. Al Plumley with a nice position. Turnover number one for North Carolina. Not a good entry pass that time into Zeller. We talked about it. They want to get their big touches early in this game. Carolina falling, but behind has been a trend we've seen in this tournament. Singler's shot is good. Well, in the two games, Singler has been subpar. Six of 31 shooting, averaging nine points. But he's a bright lights kind of player, Tim. I expect him to show up today. Carolina had to come from 19 down to beat Miami. They had to come from 14 down to beat Clemson. And they're down four here already, and they turn it over again. Made Kendall Marshall pick up his dribble, and there were no outlets for him. A strong double team. Plumley's little jump hook. Six nothing Duke. We saw Clemson go right at John Henson yesterday, and it's a similar start today. This is the first time, Mike, I've seen nerves from Kendall Marshall. He looks tight. And this foul will be against Plumley. This is on Miles Plumley, his first, the team's first. I would be surprised if Mike Krzyzewski did not challenge his front line before the game. I mean, the numbers are pretty staggering. Zeller, Barnes, Henson have averaged 40, 45 points and 26 rebounds in the series. Nolan Smith really causing problems for Kendall Marshall. Henson takes it in. You have, Still a goose egg. You have to play him as a left-handed player. That's what he favors. Inside to Plumley. Eight-nothing Duke run to start this one. Barnes shot not even close. Oh, the Plumlee is getting it done on both ends of the floor. Mason, this is what he does well, coming from behind on the drive. And then the finish down the other end for Miles Plumlee. Duke is 11 and 8 against North Carolina in tournament games, including four in a row. Nolan Smith. And the whistle and the foul will be against Duke. It's Mason Plumley. That's his first. Leslie McDonald checks in for Kendall Marshall. They'll sit him down and try to settle it down. Well, it's, it's a series of firsts, and this is his first ACC championship game, although he has played with maturity well beyond his years this year, Tim. So Strickland now takes over the point. As you look at the GMC scoreboard, We'll keep you updated on all the scores today, but these are yesterday's scores. Bring you up to speed. Miles Plumley, his second foul. Miles Plumley had 10 points against Maryland, 7 points, 4 rebounds yesterday, but he has been banging the board, so he goes out. And we'll get our first look at Ryan Kelly, who's had a nice tournament, Mike. No, he's been very solid shooting the basketball, but not as athletic as Miles Plumley. We'll see if Henson can work inside. Kelly, he's had eight double figure scoring games. Barnes splits the double team, tries to back it in. The putback's not good. Henson kicks it back out front to Stripper. And that's going to be a block. Offensive charge. Well, that's what Ryan Kelly brings you. We talked about he's not the shot blocker that either of the Plumleys are, but he leads this team in charges taken. Here's the look, and made a nice job moving over, taking it right on his chest. And that ball's kicked out of bounds. 16.46 to play in the first half, 8 nothing Duke. It's been uncanny the way the Carolinas fallen behind in each game. Yeah, and it's, if they fall too far behind in this one, it's going to be more difficult to climb back in it than the 
the Duke coaching staff has talked about competing and in the 80 minutes of the two games they felt like they've only competed really for 20 and it was the second half of the Duke game in uh, the game in Cameron which they won. Well, they came out they came out this afternoon and have really started strongly. Plumley backs in and last touch by Carolina. Singler will bring it in. North Carolina, there's going to be no double team help. They feel like Henson can uh, play him one on one on side. They want to stay with the perimeter players. Stepped on the line. That's a turnover. They're first. We don't want Mason Plumley handling the ball that far from the basket. Carolina fans come to their feet. Tar Heels need some help. This is Barnes. He's had 58 points in the first two games. And he has had no room to operate. Kyle Singler really dogging him defensively, and then the rest of the team collapsing on the drive. Still 20 on the shot clock as Barnes brings it way back out front. This has spent a lot of time on the perimeter offensively. Three by McDonald. Yeah, Leslie McDonald has been their most reliable three point shooter along with uh, Barnes in this tournament. Take a look at it. North Carolina in the first four minutes has three turnovers four points off of that for Duke and uh, two of them have come from Kendall Marshall a little rattled at the start of this game and Roy Williams has uh, taken him out sat him down for a little bit. We're going with Dexter Strickland at the point. Strickland, the 6'3 sophomore from Rahway, New Jersey. This is Henson. Zeller backs in with a jump hook. That goes halfway down. It comes back out. That's his favorite spot. He likes that right block and turning to the baseline for the jump shot. Ball is kicked out of bounds. Yeah. Well, Zeller's had a nice tournament, too, Mike. He's been so solid you know, all year long, and they've asked him to uh, play twice as many minutes. He stayed healthy the whole year. Had a little scare in the first game, falling on that wrist that he injured in his freshman year. But he has just been rock solid. Been healthy, elevated their game. Everybody's elevated their game since Kendall Marshall took over the point, but he was showing signs of nerves here early on. Singler takes it right down the lane. That's blocked by Henson, but it's goaltending. And this is a good thing I think for Kyle Singler we talked about his struggles in this series but he's been very aggressive he has not been settling on his jump shot he's trying to challenge Henson off the dribble good call on the goaltend Singler 29 points against Maryland the other night nine of nine from the free throw line 10 of 15 very efficient here's a foul the bucket goes in will it count bucket is good the foul is on Seth Curry his second. Some things break your way and Zeller just going strongly the balls kind of stripped out of his hands but still found the bottom of the net. Curry his second foul. So Zeller goes to the line he's a 74 percent free throw shooter at 14 points yesterday key bucket in both games the first and second game that he played in and he converts the three point play. Andre Dawkins comes in now for Duke. Minutes. He had a he had an important minutes last year in the championship game against Georgia Tech. That's why McDonald is not going to give him any room on the perimeter. They'll make him a driver. Plumlee out to Dawkins. Dawkins for three. Yes. There isn't anybody who needs to hit their first shot more for Duke than Andre Dawkins. That could be a good sign. Thirteen to six. Fade away. Like, how about after the game Barnes had yesterday? Is there a tendency that he might feel like he's got to do so much? How about Strickland up and over? Singler offensive foul. Take a look. What an explosive move. Singler just turned around at the right time, had his back to the play. in position standing still and outside of that restricted area was their contact. Singler. 
Hawkins is feeling it, had it halfway down and came back out. Signal comes away with it. Very physical game here early on. Smith to the hoop. Bubbling with the follow. Well, the Plumbers have been terrific on the offensive glass. Duke in general, and that whole thing takes place because Smith is aggressive going to the rim. Largest lead for Duke. Signal doing a great job on Barnes. Henson. What a terrific move. We talked about it. Ryan Kelly, not the as athletic as they are along the front lines, and what a great up and under move by Henson. And when he is dominant on both ends of the floor, this is a different North Carolina team. Singler has it taken away. Marshall will push it. He's fouled by Kelly. So for Kelly, that'll be his first. I thought that was a great decision by Roy Williams to get Kendall Marshall out, get him a breather, sit down, calm his nerves down. Carolina and Duke split the regular season. North Carolina came in here riding the momentum of that season ending win in the Dean Dome, which gave the Heels the regular season title. Ahead to Smith. A terrific defensive play that time by Kelly, getting around in front of Henson and getting the steal, readjusting his position, not laying on him. Lead is nine. Small recover on Barnes. Henson with the jumper. Then let him take that. Uh, you don't live with that shot all day long. You play the percentages. North Carolina lives in their pain. It'll be a long day for Duke. But you want Henson shooting jump shots. Smith splits the double team. There is a foul. It's going to be on. Leslie McDonald picks up his first. Team foul number three. Substitutions for the Tar Heels. Kendall Marshall goes back out. Barnes gets a breather. McDonald, Strickland, Knox, Tyler Zeller, Smith. Nice rebound by Plumley. It's been Duke. It's been all over the offensive glass in this game early. Nine-six rebounding advantage. Three offensive. Shot clock has not been a factor in this game. Smith. His shot a little bit too strong. Knox comes away with it. And the Tar Heels turn it over. Nolan Smith playing with a little bit of pain in his foot. He jammed his toe the other night in the Maryland game. Came out yesterday though and lit him up for 27. Singler beyond the arc. And Tyler Zeller pulls it down. Let's see if North Carolina can get into a flow now offensively. So far it's been all Duke. Well, let's see if Zeller gets some touches with Harrison Barnes out of the game. He's their, he's their best post up player right now. Knox tries to follow it. Kelly comes down with it. Trying to get the uh, single or post up against Watts. How about the tournament that Kelly's having? Eight double figure scoring games coming into the tournament. Comes in yesterday. This is a guy that's added 15 pounds in the offseason. Five for five against Maryland. Just off the bench. And a very sound fundamental player, too. Always makes good decisions with the basketball, high basketball IQ. Donald working on Dawkins. Goes down low and knocks a little jumper. Taken away by Kelly. Very few second chance opportunities for North Carolina in the first 10 minutes of this game. Crowd settled in. Everybody now taking a breather here. Let the game kind of find a tempo. Lovely on Zeller. Kicks it back out to Dawkins. Splash. And it's a, you know, if you're McDonald, you have to have a sense of where Dawkins is all the time, especially now that the basket's opened up for him. Andre Dawkins, two of three beyond the arc. Hey. 
Plumley a little strong again, and Kelly loses it out of bounds. Back on the floor for the Tar Heels, John Henson. Mike, this is what we were talking about, Carolina having to come from behind when you look at their deficits. Yeah, and that's, you know, but that's the level of competition is up dramatically in, uh, in this game here, and they've, they've really played a dangerous game in that, and I expected them to have a quicker start, but it didn't materialize in this game. Duke has now won eight straight ACC tournament games in Greensboro. Can Carolina stop that run? To do it, they're going to have to have another comeback here this afternoon. Kendall Marshall still struggling. Benson with the turnaround. Right now, North Carolina can't buy a basket. Great defense by Duke. Well, the thing is that Duke has kept them in the half court, Tim. They've been no easy run out plays. Smith. The bucket and he's fouled. Nolan Smith, the 185 pound senior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Gave him a little bit of a clear out, and if, you, if he gets to his right hand, it's tough. As Strickland is a terrific defensive player, but if Nolan Smith goes right, it, it's going to be trouble. Dexter Strickland has now picked up his third personal foul. So he'll go out of the ball game, and after a short rest, McDonald comes back in for Carolina. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing in this series, we talked about it, that the guards have really dominated the series for Duke. Nolan Smith averaging 32 points in the first two games. Seth Curry averaging 21. Smith now has five in this game. Four minutes without a point for North Carolina. Barnes still looking for the bottom. He's had to take tough shots too, fadeaways. Defense has been very, very stout. 0 of 5 now to start the game for Harrison Barnes. What a great pass. Singler can't catch up to it. It's another turnover by Carolina. Good idea, poor execution by Duke. And both uh, Singler and Smith smiling about that one. They're feeling an opportunity lost right there. Big Ten Championship coming up as you look at the GMC scoreboard. Big surprise. Penn State in that title game. Pressure by Nolan Smith on Marshall has been incredible, but a nice post up. First real good look that Zeller's gotten. But even on that possession, Mike, they had to work so hard to get it. Not a lot of ball movement. It was really dominated by Marshall dribbling the basketball. Almost five minutes between baskets for Carolina. This is Kelly. Yes. Kelly now has four points. Duke shooting an incredible 12 of 19 from the floor here early. And that's Singler. We're talking about him being aggressive. Instead of coming out to the sideline, he curled that screen and created the jump shot. This foul is going to be on Andre Dawkins, right in the back of Barnes. That'll be his first. So Miles Plumley comes back into the game, and Kelly will go out. It's now 1 1 for Carolina. This is maybe the opportunity that Barnes, he hasn't seen a big basket 0 of 5, but maybe gets to the free throw line, gets a little confidence and some rhythm. And he makes the first closed captioning for today's telecast, provided by Bojangles, famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. Barnes, a 74% free throw shooter. And this is the second. So one of two, he continues to struggle. Look at the field goal percentage, Mike. Not what we anticipated. Turnover here for Duke. That's five. Singler on the curl, trying to take a get a quick start. Took a step. Calling for a clear out on that side. Nobody heard him. Now he takes it right to the hoop, comes up short, follows his own shot. Oh, what an incredible play, not only on the offensive rebound, but he faked the pass to Henson. It froze the Duke defenders, and he went right back up. Carolina fans are on their feet. They haven't had a lot to cheer about, but they sense a little bit of a run. A look at Harrison Barnes and his numbers. Everybody's still talking about those 40 points in the semifinals against Clemson. 
But it's really down this end of the floor that North Carolina has to tighten things up. They've got to get some stops. They're not scoring the ball, but uh, Duke shooting a very high percentage so far. Back outside to Smith. Shot clock is at seven. Plumley wants it. Mike I don't think he sees it. Yeah, Shot clock is at three. Let's it go at one and banks it in. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I thought that was a little casual by Nolan Smith, but he got a brush screen and enough to get the shot up. Barnes with the alley oop. Well, terrific play that time by Kendall Marshall. The eye contact with Barnes, and they got a back door over the top of the defense. Here's Singler again. Out to Nolan Smith. Henson rips it away from Plumley. That's four rebounds now. Inside to Tyler Zeller. Here come the Tar Heels. Uh, he is so solid with his post moves and can show he can score with his left hand that time. Normally he turns over his left shoulder. Carolina needs a stop. How about the start that he's had? Well, oh my gracious. Yeah, you got Seth Curry and Andre Dawkins stepping up from the three point line. But Curry's had a terrific tournament. You talk about stepping up. Seth Curry sat out last year after transferring from Liberty, and he's had a terrific tournament here this year. McDonald goes inside. Henson will go to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Plumley. Mason Plumley, his second. Over this stretch now, Henson. Henson spent a lot of the first part of this game on the perimeter, Tim, setting screens. Now he's worked himself back into the block. He and Zeller are getting touches in the paint. Henson had that big second half yesterday with, ended with 18 points. Reminder coming up at halftime, we'll have analysis for you, highlights, stats, and a whole lot more. That's all coming up on the Hardy's halftime report. Henson has another one coming. He's a it's improved at the line as the year has gone on. He gets the roll. Back up to Singler. Singler looks for help. Seth Curry back to Nolan Smith. Curry left alone beyond the arc. Looks like Kendall Marshall has settled into the game to Henson. All right, Seth Curry with the steal off the offensive rebound. Let's go back to the other side. Roy Williams says that Tyler Zeller was pushed. No indication from the referee right now. Every time the ball goes down, the play usually goes through there. And I think they're, they're going to maybe look at. Zeller with the elbow, really no play or the push by Singler at that time. So the officials will go to the monitor again. It's Carl Hess, Brian Percy, and Jamie Lucky, the officials. And that's I think that's what they're looking at with Kyle Singler. Zeller got his elbow up on the play, and then Singler pushed him down afterwards. And again, there's a a halt to the play. We had it a while ago to clean up some blood on the floor. Now we've got it here. Review a play. It doesn't doesn't look like there's going to be anything. No. They, just had, they just had to review the play, and there was nothing going to be called. Yeah, both coaches seem okay with that. I want to remind you once again to be sure to check out ontheline.com. See why one in six is a statistic that you should know about. And see what Aaron Andrews has in common with Digger Phelps and Billy Packer. It's ontheline.com. You got to read it and you got to see it. I think that was a correct call. I mean, the referees are compelled to take a look at it, but really nothing there from either player. Nolan Smith with a fall away jumper. He's now in double figures. Yeah, it's a championship game, Mike. Let him play on. Three. 
Barnes, they double him, kicks it back out to McDonald. Any drive, a big is going to step up for Duke and give Singler support. Looks like Henson made that shot a little more difficult than he had to had to do it. Yeah, and, and no double teams coming down on the big, so Henson's that's a shot that he's got to make. He had terrific position right in front of the rim. This foul is going to be against McDonald. That's his second. Tyler Zeller goes out, gets a little breather. Fouls are starting to mount up, especially for Carolina. Shot clock really hasn't been a factor. The one time Nolan Smith hit a three ball, but he noticed it late. Inside they go to Plumley. Plumley is fouled by Henson. And that's a play you rarely see him make. He's one of the best shot blockers in the nation, and he got a reach in call at this time. And I think the reason why that North Carolina is getting into foul trouble. Duke has been very aggressive. They've shot very few threes in this game so far. They've been attacking the rim. So Miles Plumley draws iron on the first one. He's only a 60% free throw shooter if you look at the GMC school board. But the second will come in. An empty trip for Duke. See if Carolina can take that empty trip and build on it. And he walked. And that's the thing, it's been other people who have been making plays. They've gotten the ball out of Marshall's hands, and uh, he, he really hasn't run much of the offense in this game. Mike, that's eight turnovers for North Carolina. We've seen him in the first two games in this tournament. Turn the ball over a lot. Uh, they, they played, uh, you know, Clemson is a very, very good defensive team, as is Duke. Curry looked at the three, dribbles inside, has it taken away. And a pretty good play by Marshall. Ahead to Henson. And the foul. What a look by Kendall Marshall. Seven guys in the box score already for the Blue Devils. But this is John Henson. Can't complete the three point play. And Duke turns it over. That's a travel. So Carolina will get it back. Seven turnover of the game for Duke team, so they're not doing a great job taking care of the basketball. Just have that feeling that Carolina hasn't even gotten into their rhythm yet. They're doing a great job on Barnes. Every time he touches it, he's got two guys on him. Tough shot. There have been, well, there have been no easy shots, right? You know, there are very few, and, and they've kept, Duke has kept them in the half court, which has been a big key. Only two fast break points for North Carolina to this point in the game. Singler steps back. Now when Carolina comes down this time, let's watch that defense because they extend it and they lock on. That's the first jump shot he's really taken and he was short on it. Henson gets it back. Kelly did a great job to knock that ball loose. Well, he's a sneaky shot blocker too, a timing shot blocker, a lot different than Henson. 13 on the shot clock. Marshall tries to get it over to Knox. It's knocked out of bounds with 11 on the shot clock. So Tyler Zeller comes back in, checks in for Henson. Shot clock is down to eight. Shot clock at four. Nice job by McDonald to draw the foul on Nolan Smith. Our principal financial edge of the game is Star Watch as we look at Nolan Smith with 10 points for 10 from the field and Barnes really struggling Mike. Well, that's what both teams talked about is making the other teams score or shoot a very low percentage. They know you're not going to shut people out but uh, 
Barnes struggling in this game one of six and uh, actually if you look at it in North Carolina would probably live with Nolan Smith shooting four for ten or four for eleven. McDonald misses the free throw. He is a 70 percent free throw shooter. The sophomore from Memphis everybody else struggling right now. He's Carolina's top scorer off the bench. They need him to contribute. And he makes the second. He now has four points. I look for Duke to play them, play him the way they did. And you don't want to let him get good looks from the three. You want to make him a driver, which he had to do in that situation. Smith takes it to the hoop. How about that pass? The wraparound to Kelly. All right, it's Brian Kelly. <laughs> three for three now from the floor. Two rebounds, six points. He's had a heck of a tournament. As Zeller loses it out of bounds. Nine turnovers for the Tar Heels. There's the luck of Nolan Smith has had to do so much averaging over 20 points and five assists. Good find knowing where your big is going to be at the end of that play. Three assists for him on the game. Again he penetrates kicks it back out. This is Dawkins for three. Yes. Well, I tell you, you know it's amazing a thing what body language is and Andre. <laughs> Andre Dawkins is just full of it right now. He is on fire. Pushes the lead to 18. Marshall inside. A little jump hook. Zeller is pushed out of the way. So it will be on Kelly. And that's Ryan Kelly's second personal. So Tyler Zeller will go to the line. I told you that Zeller had 14 points yesterday, but he had key buckets in both the quarterfinals and the semifinals. Yeah, do the game winner against uh, Miami and then the game tying shot against Clemson that sent it into overtime. And he is the best shooting uh, free throw, best free throw shooter front line guy in the ACC so he's a he's a guy that you're going to go to at the end of the games. Well, they need him now Mike because they are trying to manufacture points. Uh, and, and with Barnes struggling they've got to get something out of the interior. This has not been the first half that North Carolina had hoped for. Duke on the other hand. Blue Devils have been spectacular. Smith looks up at the shot clock. It's got 15. He drifts way out to midcourt. Now he takes it down the middle. The floater. The finish. Why it is? How been, about Plumley? It has been Duke's front line that has been dominant in this game so far, and that's why they have an 18-point lead. They are all over the offensive glass. Another great pass, and the answer at the other end. Uh, they, they, Carolina needed that too. Justin Knox is very aggressive when he comes in looking for his offense. Justin Knox, the graduate student who played three years at Alabama, comes and answers the, the call. A little floater that time draws up the back line, and that allows Plumley in. You see the split of it. Zeller got caught out of position. Well, a packed house, 23,500 fans here have jammed in to watch this game between Duke and North Carolina, expecting a classic. But so far, it's been all Duke. 32.7 seconds remain in the first half. What you want now, if you're Duke, you want to make absolutely sure you take the last shot of the half. Shot clock is off. Game clock at 15. So Smith will move with 10. Final 10 seconds of the first half. Down to five. Smith loses it. Carolina is fouled by Kyle Singler. Absolutely the, the last thing that Duke wanted to happen to get credit North Carolina defensively playing a little bit better. I thought Nolan Smith was a little casual. At the end of that play, McDonald played him well and forced the turnover, and Singler picks up the foul. Leslie McDonald shooting two. So Singler now with two, and Leslie McDonald goes to the line. And six seconds left. I told you earlier, McDonald's a 70% free throw shooter, but he has missed here this afternoon, and he puts that one down. He now has five points. Forty-four. 
Point six seconds left. All right, Scott, thanks. We're all set to go now. They're Duke leading 42-28. The Blue Devils were five of nine from beyond the arc in that first half. If it wasn't for free throws, Carolina would really be out of this, but they were nine for 12 at the line. Duke will try to maintain the exact same intensity they had early. Singler, pump fake, takes it down the lane, little floater, and he scores. He's only taken one jump shot. He's been very aggressive in this game, Tim. He's curled screens. He's gotten into the lane. Tyler Zeller with a jump hook. Still throws up a brick. Nothing has come easily for North Carolina today. Smith into the paint with a floater. Marshall kicks it out to Barnes. Henson with a rebound. Takes it up strong. Can't finish. Henson again. There's some of the resolve we did not see in the first half. No, I mean, it's also now the 11th offensive rebound that North Carolina has gotten, but they haven't converted many of them up to that point. But the, one of the three two rushes up the floor that they've had. Plumley is blocked, and it goes off the foot of Zeller. First one of those days, first block shot for uh, Henson in this game. And uh, I'm sure he was challenged at halftime to be more dominant on both ends of the floor. Henson came into the game with 11 straight double digit rebounding games. He's got 10 here today. Singler, the bonus here, can't finish. Hits the iron and comes back out to Kendall Marshall. That was the recipe last year for success to get offensive rebounds and open looks at three. But Singler had two good looks, which he wasn't able to knock down. Tyler Zeller. Nice dig in that time by Seth Curry. Zeller brought the ball down, and that brings guards into play. Like, you know, they came into this tournament talking about Singler being in a little bit of a slump, but then he came in, lit up Maryland for 29. Two blocks now, one for Zeller, one for Henson. And again, Nolan Smith jumps on Kendall Marshall. Two guys from the Washington, D.C. area know each other. Really battling this afternoon. Shot clock is down to 15. The jump hook by Zeller is no good. Barnes with the follow. Yeah, strong play. Good to see Harrison Barnes. His jump shot has not been there. Working himself into the offensive glass. And uh, North Carolina's front line starting to assert itself in this game for the first time. Here it is. We talked about the blocks coming alive. Zeller getting a piece of that one. And then Harrison Barnes flying in from the weak side, starting to become a factor. Carolina has trailed by as many as 18. Duke has controlled the tempo, has controlled this game from the get-go. Carolina now has cut it to 14, cut it to 12. Here we are at a 12 point differential. We'll see if they can get a stop defensively. Singler. No, sir. Duke still performing at a high level as Singler knocks down a three. Much better balance on that jump shot of you. You think he had some early ones that fell short. Looked much stronger. And that's going to be last touch by Kendall Marshall. What a game he's had. He's really struggled. Had a few very nice assists along the course to Henson. But he looked like a freshman early in the ball game. Yeah, and it's and it's a different deal. I mean, you know, playing in the ACC tournament is one thing, but in the championship game, it's it's another first that you go through. Singler off balance. And we mean no disrespect to Kendall Marshall. He is a terrific player, but he just looked a little unnerved early. Well, and that's <laughs> It's not just the circumstance. He's got one of the best defensive guards in the country playing him, and uh, Nolan Smith, the player in the year, to, to getting the ball out of his hands. 
So Barnes will bring it in. 16-39 to play in the ball game. We're looking for that patented Carolina run. Make it a little more interesting in the Greensboro Coliseum. Barnes fades away. Look out, here comes Harrison Barnes. Yeah, maybe that offensive rebound gets him going. A good recognition. He had a smaller cover on him on Nolan Smith and dove right into the post. Barnes has hit his last two shots. Singler goes inside. Plumlee. Plumlee's jump hook. Gets the roll. Miles Plumlee. Between Miles and Mason Plumlee and Ryan Kelly, they have not missed a shot in this game. <laughs> How impressive is that? Kendall Marshall is fouled by Nolan Smith. That's two on Nolan Smith. The passionate Duke fans there, and I want to take time to say uh, hello and best wishes to Bill Brill, a good friend who's uh, at home uh, ill and on the road to recovery and wish him well. Know he's watching it. Know he really misses covering this event. He's been a terrific sports writer for a long, long time. Good job, Mike. We certainly miss him down here. You're right. One of the all-time greats. Duke has had a double digit lead since it was 17 to 8. Kendall Marshall misses the free throw. The frustration starting to show a little bit in his body language. Look at his numbers today two points, four assists, four turnovers. Well, you can see too, it's reflected in the field goal percentage that he has not been able to run the offenses as efficiently as he has in games past, and it's shown up in the field goal percentage for North Carolina. Trying to trap Singler over to Smith. Somebody's got to be open down low, so they kick it. Now Smith again. Shot clock at 15. And Nolan Smith's eyes got big. He's got Tyler Zeller on him. Carolina comes away with it. Marshall right down the middle. Now that looked like a Kendall Marshall. We saw the second half of the season. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen that in this game up to this point, but a good aggressive rush up the floor. 49 36. Singler. Carolina comes up with it. Tar Heels have numbers. Offensive foul. Right, Seth Curry's made some big defensive plays in this game and Strickland a little over aggressive this time. That's his game, though, end to end, getting to the rim. He's not a jump shooter. It's Strickland's fourth, Mike. You can see it. Curry, had, he had him teed up the whole way. That is really sound defense with a guy bearing down at you at full, full, full speed. Tremendous defense. Strickland never came under control. This is going to be called a singular, I believe, isn't it? It is, and that's his third. And, and in not a smart way either. Trying to set a screen, never really got set. Still plenty of time in the ball game. 14-42. Barnes, way too strong. Another strong defensive play by Curry. Here comes Smith working on Marshall. Takes it right to the rack and he's fouled. Game's starting to open up a little bit, Tim. I thought in the first half it was more half court for both teams. Now they're starting to go end to end. Nolan Smith, player of the year in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Started out at St. John's College High School, moved over to Riverdale Baptist. Then ended up at Oak Hill. Tremendous player. Close captioning for today's telecast provided by Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. Mike, how incredible was it that Nolan Smith's dad, Derek, won the national title with Louisville in 1980 in Indianapolis, and then 20 years after that, here uh, Nolan comes in, he wins the national championship in the same club, same town. The follow by Zeller. Very emotional, too, for. Nolan Smith that Derek was a teammate of mine in Philadelphia in a tragic early death. But uh, it seemed like life came full circle for him when that happened. You know, Nolan was there on the cruise with his dad when his dad passed away. Curry for three and he's fouled. Correction, Dawkins. 
Now, good kick out to Seth Curry, and uh, boy, he's been terrific. This last thing you want to get out, and McDonald just following through on the play. But Seth Curry, they, Duke is putting a lot of pressure. Seth Curry has hit that jumper a couple times in this ball game. I mean, he's almost in the front row. North Carolina winning the free throw battle, Duke winning the three point battle. Tyler Zeller takes it in with a jump hook. He's now got 13 points. Kelly from beyond New York. Boy, Henson was looking for the long pass. Carolina comes up empty. Nolan Smith turns it over. And the foul. Third foul on Nolan Smith. Three on Singler, three on Smith. That was a good call, too. McDonald was the only one who committed to get on the floor right here. Kelly coming in late, but you can see Smith coming over the top. Great hustle by both teams, Mike. Got a feeling that setting up is another classic. Mike Krzyzewski not happy with the call. 13-10 to play. Lead still 14 by Duke. Not Duke was playing at a very high level. Not a lot of scorers out on the floor for North Carolina. Kendall Marshall misses again. Could help that team. It looked like Marshall had a wide open lane, but Plumley closed it up quickly. Is going to be against Carolina. It's called on Justin Watts. So that's four team fouls now against North Carolina. Duke never got into the penalty in the first half. Only six personal fouls for North Carolina. Singler with the turnaround jumper. Bottoms. Shot selection is going to be a key for him today, and uh, that was terrific. Got a nice balance, curled the screen a little bit. Jim Curry takes it in the middle and kicks it back out to McDonald. How long will Harrison Barnes sit? Here's Kendall Marshall's shot is strong. Zeller with the put back and he's fouled. Credit Justin Watts for keeping that play alive. He initially got it up and Zeller was able to get control. And here comes Barnes off the bench. ACC is now on Facebook. All you have to do is log on to Facebook and become a fan of the Atlanta Coast Conference. Get breaking news, conference updates, and connect with other ACC fans from around the world. Mason Plumley picked up that foul, his third. Zeller makes the free throw. And Harrison Barnes for North Carolina. Harrison Barnes checks in for the Tar Heels. Kelly goes out. Plumley comes back in for Duke. Zeller has another one coming. And he misses that. Rebound by Kyle Singler. Singler again working on Watts. Tries to back him in. Turnaround jumper. Watts comes up with it. And Marshall will run. Zeller loses the handle. Here comes Smith. And he's fouled by Kendall Marshall. What he's capable of, certainly. He's only three of ten from the floor today. Nolan Smith at the line. He's money. In the first two games of this series, Nolan Smith shot 20 free throws against North Carolina, so he's had the ability to get inside and get fouled. That one was out on a break. Duke in North Carolina for the ACC championship game for the 11th time. Two story programs in this game. It's been a double-digit lead, and it was 17 to 8. Duke has been in control. 
Henson takes it to the rack and scores. He's now in double figures. Henson has 10. He and Zeller are both have been more active offensively in the paint in the second half. Carolina still has not been able to make a sustained run against this defense. Justin Watts has come in and, and been effective, especially on this end of the floor, and they were trying to give Barnes a little bit of a break, so Watts is the guy who's defending Singler. And the turnover, travel. Took too many. Well, that's the second time that Singler's gotten called for the travel that way. He takes that first step without putting the ball on the floor. Tries to gain an advantage by doing it. That's why they call it. And he's got 10 turnovers now for Duke. Over to Watts. Watts will spin right into Plumley, And now Knox will take it at the rack. Henson tries to clean up the mess. And Duke comes away with it. Curry ahead to Smith. The alley oop to Plumley, and he's pushed by Knox. What a great look by Nolan Smith. Yeah, we talk about the fact that Zeller and Henson are as good as anybody in the country as bigs running the floor. Mason Plumley showed a little bit of a burst that time. Mason Plumley shooting two. Mason Plumley, 6'10, 240 pounder from Warsaw, Indiana. Dad played basketball at Tennessee Tech. This is the first free throw. But he's a guy, if he's out in the open floor, especially for this second group that's in there for North Carolina, you want to put him at the free throw line, not let him have any dunks. This is a boat. We're about to go under 10 minutes. Barnes. What a sweet shot that was. Yeah, and I, and I like the fact that he's working himself back into the game with drives and being aggressive going into the into the paint area instead of settling for jump shots. Barnes brings the Carolina crowd to its feet. Lumley goes inside to his brother. Shot clock at 15. Curry, Singler. Shot clock at eight. Shot clock at five. Out to Singler for three. Curry with the follow. Yes! Wow, that's a nice job by Mason Plumley to keep that ball alive on the miss. Curry in the right place at the right time. That's it with the turnaround. Knox with the follow. Boy, that Curry bucket was big down here because the Carolina fans could feel a little bit of a run coming on. Well, just getting those 50-50 balls, but uh, it's been North Carolina that has been all over the offensive glass in this second half. Plumley whistle on the foul. Foul is on John Henson, his second. Miles Plumley shooting two. So Miles Plumley goes to the line. He's a 60% free throw shooter. Psychology major. It comes in handy in these matchups. <laughs> Kelly replaces Mason Plumley. Knox gets the rebound. So we go under nine minutes to play now in the championship game of the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Grant, Mike Chavinsky with you. Scott Kozlowski, Mike Hogwood, Corey Alexander. Barnes with Nolan Smith on. We'll see if they can take advantage of that in the post. Now they got the switch back on Singler. Step back jumper. See if that helps him. Yeah, one of the first confident moves that I've seen him make offensively looking for a shot. 61 49 after Marshall's jumper. Curry gets back to Nolan Smith. We 
feed down goes to Henson. Pretty good job by Knox in keeping Smith out on the perimeter and settling for a tough shot. <laughs> Offensive foul. Third one we've seen on North Carolina in this ball game. Yeah, Miles Plumley stepping up that time. Justin Watts trying to get out of himself a little bit on the offensive end. Side got it over to me. There was nobody there, and uh, it, was, it was a great moment. We we did not have a good regular season. Came into the tournament as a sixth seed, and were able to beat the number three, two, and one seeds in consecutive days. I was just with Buck Williams not too long ago out to dinner. We still laugh about it, but he can laugh now. He turned out to be a great pro, certainly a quality guy. And G man, the same goes for you, partner. Uh, uh, he was, I, and I. I had the good fortune to be a teammate of Bucks up with the Nets and uh, Henson now starting to become a goaltender and show up as a shot blocker in this game. Good defensive play there. His second. Nolan Smith doing a great job managing this game. Drops a two ball on him. Well, Nolan Smith in there. Kendall Marshall was giving him a lot of room. He was respecting Nolan Smith's ability to drive the ball. Duke has had the answers all afternoon. This dribbled off McDonald's knee. Once again, and this is something that Duke's been able to do all game long, Tim, in the half court. They've gotten the ball out of Kendall Marshall's hands and made other people make decisions. 13 turnovers now for the Tar Heels. The look inside, Seth Curry got caught on the switch and they were unable to get Barnes inside. Sometimes it's tough when you get those switches and, and uh, Marshall didn't have the ball. It's tough to see. They're not always able to take advantage of those. Curry. His shot is short. Marshall will run with it. Good job by Duke to get back. Crossover by Marshall and the block by Kelly. But Kelly's the last one to touch it, and so it'll belong to the Tar Heels. Wow, that was a terrific move. Kendall Marshall just left Nolan Smith behind but was unable to finish. Marshall now three of ten in this game. We talk about second halves being a tough, tougher to shoot. Championship games, the whole game, that rim seems to get a little bit smaller. North Carolina. Only one three-pointer. Yesterday they had eight. That'll help. Right on cue. Well, Singler tried to push Mason Plumley out to pick up, but he was a little late, and that's all the room that Harrison Barnes needed. Barnes makes it an 11-point game. Whistler and a foul away from the ball. If you want the latest information on your favorite ACC teams, all you have to do is check out. The team pages section of the ACC.com and it's brought to you by Toyota. For content you can't find anywhere else, visit the ACC.com. Kelly goes to the line to shoot one and one. Yeah, very reliable, 83%. ACC all academic choice this year. You can see it reflected out on the court in the way he plays. Very cerebral player. That was a team I never reached. <laughs> he played football, what do you expect? <laughs> I know you were on the all academic <laughs> team. Here's again, we talked about that matchup and Seth Curry getting posted up by Harrison Barnes and called on the play. That's a tough, tough matchup. Foul is on Curry. That's his third. He's That's starting a, to tighten up a little bit, Mike, as we go down the stretch. That's a good job of uh, Barnes understanding who's guarding him and where he needs to get to on the floor. Carolina fans just would love to see it get down to single digits. And the roll for Barnes for two. Starting and to come alive. And they, you know, we talked about him shooting a low percentage, but he did not let that first half affect his second half. A nine point game. Seth Curry beyond the arc. Yes! What a find by Nolan Smith dribbling away. He knew where Seth Curry was going to be spotted up. Marshall is fouled. Block will be on Nolan Smith. He doesn't like the call. That's four on Nolan Smith, the ACC Player of the Year. 
Well, here's the look, and uh, Harrison Barnes has really found his rhythm, and it's evident when shots like this are going down for you. And then down the other end, look at that find. The cross-court pass, the defense a little slow getting out there. So and this is a time, this is where you got a senior who's won a national championship and Nolan Smith and Mike Krzyzewski having the confidence to leave him out on the floor with four personal fouls. Marshall makes the free throw. Try to make the lead 10. There aren't a lot of people sitting down in the arena. <laughs> Ten point game. Five and a half to play. The ACC championship game. Packed house. Number one and two seeds. Great feed to Singler. Blocked. What a recovery by Zeller. Marshall. Barnes. Wow, that was that was a big miss that you can send again the North Carolina contingent sensing that momentum and run and that was a very good look that Barnes had. So very wisely Nolan Smith pulls it out he's going to try to change the tempo of the game a little bit looks up at the shot clock to try to melt it. Ten on the shot clock here he goes. Kick it out Kelly beyond the arm splash. Marshall takes it up. Turnover. And again, Nolan Smith will take it out. How about the way he took the momentum right back to North Carolina? Uh, and then a couple of threes with Curry and Kelly. And he is orchestrating this offense beautifully with four personals. Yeah, he's got the thing to be worried about is the charge if he gets too deep into the lane. Shot clock at 10 again, and here's the foul on Tyler Zeller. And they are really blitzing that far whenever he comes off a screen roll. So again, just knowing where your guys are spaced out along the baseline. Ryan Kelly is a 32% three-point shooter, and that's a little bit of a look of frustration. Nine points for Kelly. Smith gets the roll. And Duke has just taken the momentum right back from North Carolina. Strickland goes out of the game. Leslie McDonald comes back in for the Tar Heels. Correction, they take Kendall Marshall out. Smith hits the roll again. And just like that, it's 71 to 56. Owen Smith, nine assists, average five on the year. Now the Tar Heels starting to run out of time. And he double dribbled. Danny Ferry, one of the most versatile players in the history of the conference, really uh, well schooled in all fundamentals, could do a lot on the floor. North Carolina made a little bit of a run, got the lead down to nine. It was the first time it had been a single digit since 17 to 8. And Plumley turns it over. See, and that's where you got to catch. If you're a big in that situation, you've got to catch and wait till somebody, a guard, a ball handler gets it. You can't put the ball on the floor. Strickland brings it across the timeline. Kendall Marshall now off the bench. He'll check back in the next dead ball. This foul will be on Plumley for a little bit of a push down low. That's four on Plumley. Yeah, anytime you're a big and you, your guy you're guarding catches it in the post, you can't have hands on him. So that is four on Mason Plumley, and North Carolina now is in the bonus. They'll shoot one and one. Lloyd Williams coaching his 800 second game. What a career he's had since he. Graduated from Carolina. 
Tyler Zeller misses the free throw and Duke gets it back. Empty possession right there. We talked about how good of a free throw shooter he is. And what that also does is not allow North Carolina to get into their full court pressure. The defending national champions trying to wrap up the ACC championship. Under three minutes to play, the pass to Kelly, and it's taken away by the Tar Heels. Got to go up stronger than that against this front line. What a terrific defensive play. He gets it back on the other end, just changed positions and came from the underneath to get the steal. Now the Duke faithful are on their feet. They can feel the championship. To 16, 215 to play. Shot clock is at 10. Nolan Smith with the running one-hander. Uh, that's a senior play right there. Singler, instead of forcing a shot up against shot blockers inside, recycles the clock. And again, they'll try to melt the clock. They spread the floor. Uncanny what Mike Krzyzewski has done at Duke. Underneath, exclamation point. Mike Krzyzewski wants a 30-second timeout. Tim, that's what happens when you start having to chase and double-team outside. You get spread out defensively, and if you take care of the basketball, you get dunks. Nice decision that time. The weak side, a little late getting down in front of Plumley, and he finishes it off. While we have a break, it's time to announce the grand prize winner in our ACC getaway giveaway promotion. Wesley Cooper from Wake Forest, North Carolina is the winner of an easy go golf car, a set of Callaway golf clubs, and a fantastic golf getaway to Maggie Valley Resort, beautiful Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Congratulations, Wesley. Thanks to all the ACC fans for your participation. And we thank our sponsors as well. Have a good time, Wesley Cooper. All right, talk about balanced scoring. You've got three Blue Devils with double figures and then three others with nine points. Everybody having a hand in this game. In North Carolina, no points in the last four minutes. And they can feel it's over. How about Nolan Smith playing the last few minutes with four personal fouls and orchestrating this game and stopping the Carolina run and still being effective and playing at the same level not taking any plays off sixty five seconds remain one minute one minute remaining and scores with three on the shot clock. Barnes is fouled, but it's a moot point now. Want to see highlights of this game or any ACC basketball games? Just check out the Havlin ACC basketball highlights now online. You can view action from each week's ACC Network tournament telecast. Log on to the ACC.com. Well, this one not quite the classic we expected, but. It was a classic performance by Duke. Well, I mean, they, they did it two ways, really. They took two players out of the mix for North Carolina. Kendall, Mar Kendall Marshall did not have a great game, and the two seniors now getting a curtain call. And a big hug from Coach Krzyzewski and all the coaches. And, and for anybody who says the ACC Tournament Championship doesn't mean anything, I think that uh, picture puts that to rest. This would be Coach K's 13th ACC Championship. Had a nice visit with Michael on Monday. Went down to Durham, spent the day with him, talking about all of his success. Says, I really don't know how many championships I have. I know I love the kids and love the coach. And he, and he was just worried about this weekend, I can guarantee you that. He was definitely focused. Henson with a little bit of a jumper. They just continue to find iron, and that'll end it. The last 25 seconds of the 2011 Atlantic Coast Conference Championship and the Blue Devils of Duke 
will be crowned the winner. And maybe a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. Certainly uh, something to put on the resume. Duke's 16 straight NCAA berth. It's over. 